Hey everyone, welcome back to the Rocketeer. I made 225 pounds of thrust on the sugar motor with Sorbitol. I made 330 pounds of thrust on this small case with fructose. Let's take a look. Ready? Give me a countdown. Okay, you want to step back a little bit? Give me a countdown. That had some kicks to it. Wow, that was a lot of thrust. Now, how many of you out there think, man, that was awesome. Let's do it again, load it up, and put it in a rocket. Raise your hands. Oh yeah, I see you out there. Now, how many think, don't ever do this again? You almost tore the quantum space-time fabric. Let's not do this again. Raise your hands. Oh yeah, I see you guys out there. Hmm, what is the quantum space-time fabric anyways? I don't know. For the first test, I used fructose, a very easy to melt but fast burning sugar. So it burned a little faster than I thought it would. I used two nozzle size larger than I would normally use for this case just to be on the safe side. And it did some damage to the case and to the nozzle. Let's take a look at those pictures. As you can see from the pictures, we came very close to a rud. That's something I do not want to repeat. So for the second test, I'm going to use the same fructose only this time, I'm going to substitute 20% of the sugar with erythritol. Now, erythritol is a much slower burning sugar. So what happens when I mix a fast burning sugar with a slower burning sugar at that ratio? Will it slow the burn down enough for the case to survive and still make good and powerful thrust? Let's check that out. 1,000 case fructose, 20% erythritol. I was happy with the results from that video. The motor made good thrust, but yet it didn't overpressurize or damage the case. And it had the characteristic erythritol tail. I'll put the graph up on the screen and describe what you're looking at. And erythritol has a long tail off on the end of it. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. That's typical from what I have seen from erythritol. It could be used to your advantage. It still produced good thrust, like to lift a heavy rocket off the rail. And once the rocket gets moving and has enough inertia, it doesn't take quite as much thrust, doesn't take a lot of thrust to keep it going. So you would end up with a little bit slower speed and probably a higher altitude with a motor like this. Now keep in mind that this is a rather small case. Once you add in the nozzle and the forward enclosure, it takes up quite a bit of space in the case itself. So that does reduce the amount of fuel. And the nozzle that I'm using is a shorter version of what I would typically use. You can see there, it's still got a pretty good size uh, nozzle diameter. It's a little shorter, so I can fit some more fuel in it. In other words, it's not quite as efficient as it would be in a longer motor. So just keep those things in mind. That's all for today. I hope we all learned something. I'll see you in the next video.